Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. This is part two of the Sega 762 by 39 conversion. I have laid out all the parts that I'll be using for my conversion here. Of course I have all the parts that I had ordered and I showed you in part one. And I want to go over all the tools that will be needed for this conversion really quick. So let's take a look. We're going to need a drill with a 3 16 bit on there that's capable of drilling out rivets. <laughs> you can, there are rivets up here, I'll show you those in a minute. You're going to need a, a little torch or a lighter or something because these plugs that we're going to put in the holes that we, uh, where the rivets uh, will cease to exist, you want to melt those in place so they never come out. You're going to need, well, you don't need this, but this is going to make things easier when we deal with the hammer spring or mainspring, however you want to refer to that. I think this might make life easier. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver, not a very small one, a big one. Uh, needle nose pliers, a 5 millimeter, yeah, number 5 millimeter uh, Allen wrench some Loctite, a twisty tie, little metal twisty tie. You want a punch set, a little different punches because we'll be punching pins here. You want to have ones, uh, I suggest brass or even nylon ones. You don't, you know, there's no need or it's not necessary to have steel and you'll risk marring something that you don't want to. You want a rubber mallet or soft face mallet and a smaller mallet. This, this one is nylon and, and brass. And I got some lube or you know you maybe some oil or something like that because I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a thin coat on some of the parts as I put them in so everything will be nice and lubricated before we start. You're also gonna need a, a Sega rifle <laughs> of course and down there on the end as you can see all the way down here I have a, a a spray painter and some Duracoat. I'll go ahead and zoom in there so you can see I got some black Duracoat because when you take the plate off the bottom of the receiver um, it may or may not be painted. I don't think it's painted so you're gonna have to paint it. Now you could use like uh, just some plain old black spray paint the kind that you use for grills you know high temp would probably be good enough if you're if you're not too anal about things. I, I tend to be kinda anal about crap so you know, you know, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. It's your gun. You do with it what you want, as long as it's uh, legal. <laughs> so, those are the parts. Are, these are all the tools that are needed. I think that should cover it all. The only other thing is you might want a vise with uh, rubber, so you could clamp the gun to make things easier. I'm not going to, so you could see what uh, if it's much harder without the vise. So if you don't have a vise, you'll go do the same thing that you're going to see here on the video. On that Carolina Shooter Supply um, website, they have videos on how to do this. So if you want to see someone who's uh, professional at this kind of stuff do it, I highly suggest you watch those videos. <laughs> Not just mine. If you want to see a computer geek do uh, gun armory, then you can watch mine. And I got my uh, super duper light here so I could really get some good lighting right over here and we got the Sega and I just have my little gun holder thingy here. I also have a little catch metal catch thing. It's magnetic where I can put some parts and I have some water to keep myself hydrated because I talk so much. So the first thing that we'll go ahead and do is do a safety check. You can see there's no magazine in here. I gotta take the safety off and you can see there is nothing in there. So we're clear. Get over here just a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and take the dust cover off. So we'll go ahead and press this button back here. I'm going to do this so you can see everything. So let me reach around here. Then you're going to press this button and then pop 
the dust cover off. Now the recoil spring, all you're gonna do is push that same button in. You can see that? And it's gonna come out of the slot. I want to make sure you can see this really good. This is part of the field strip, by the way. So you would just push this forward and then just take that out, put it aside. Now we have the bolt and bolt carrier. Just sort of bring this back and lift out. <laughs> See, these are all things that could possibly go wrong. There we go. And you have your piston there too. And if you don't want to mess with your bolt, don't don't turn that. <laughs> don't turn it. Or you're gonna to have to get it all in place. Which when you're field stripping, you should learn how to do this stuff. Next thing you want to do is allow the hammer to come forward. Well, let me see if I could get us a good close look at it. I'm gonna really bring this in good. Make sure we got this light directly. Again, I'm trying to do some detailed stuff here. Actually, let me move this. I want to get this lighting as perfect as possible. There we go. So, here's the hammer. It's cocked. I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger and just sort of allow this to move forward so it's going to push the trigger and allow the hammer to go forward just like that and now we're ready to start disassembling this gun so the first thing we want to do is remove the stock now to remove the stock there are three screws on the stock Saiga. <laughs> Someone told me it's Saiga, that's Sega. So I'll go ahead and correct myself right here. So you're going to take a screw here out, a screw here out, and on the other side you have a screw right there. So you need to get your flathead screwdriver. And we'll go ahead and disassemble. We'll go ahead and disassemble. We'll unscrew this here. Get a, a slotted screwdriver that fits well. Get something too small, you're going to mar up your screws. I think these are all the same size. Let me make sure this bottom one's the same size here. You got a screw right there. I'm trying to stay out of the camera's view here while doing all this. This is the hardest part. I mean, this, this really is not that hard. But trying to get it right in the camera is the hardest thing. Now you can see that all three screws are the same size, so you don't have to keep track of which one goes where. Got my little cup holder thing. This thing is magnetic. It's by uh, got it at Lowe's. Lowe's Cobalt, pretty good. So you can keep track of your stuff. So now we're ready to remove the stock. And that's where the big rubber mallet comes into play. And what you want to do is take your mallet and hit right here to work it out. See that? It's starting to come out. I'm going to have to turn my speakers off of my computer. Alright, now I ha I've had this off a couple of times, so you, it might be a little bit harder for you to get yours out. But there we go. That's out. There's the stock, and you can set this aside. We ain't gonna reuse this. So the next step we're gonna deal with the spring here that's going around the hammer, the hammer spring, or some people may refer to it as the main spring. And you can see the hammer here. Here's your hammer that we went ahead and allowed to go up. And you can see there's a spring wound around 
the bottom here of the hammer and you have these two legs that come down one on each side right there now those legs rest on the top of the trigger assembly and I have the the new TAPCO G2 um, trigger that I'll be putting in right here so just to show you like here's the trigger as it is in the <laughs> in the Sega right there and those springs sort of rest on here and here of this trigger when you pull the trigger it moves so just like that I'm gonna go ahead and mess with the trigger right here so you can see it move inside there see that so you can see where those legs are sitting it's good to get to know where everything is so that's why I'm showing you this so now I'm gonna use this fancy tool here <laughs> just a uh, Got this at Lowe's where I get most of my tools, this little hook. Because that's going to make it easy to get these springs. And what we're going to do is take these two legs here and sort of pull them up and tie them with a twisty tie behind the hammer here. So I can just sort of keep everything together. Now I'm going to go ahead and get on the other side of the camera. And hopefully I'll have to keep everything in there. I'm going to grab these springs. See how easy that was just to just grab it like that? Let me zoom in again. I'm doing a lot of detail here. And you can see how easy it is to put things back with this also. That's why I love this. So you just grab it just like that. And you can pull it up. So I'm going to grab this one and put it back here. And then I'm going to grab this other one. I gotta keep on checking my camera to make sure I'm keeping it inside the frame. This is twice as hard doing it like this. These things will dig into your hand in a second, so be very, very careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of um, sort of wrap these two around here. You can't even see. Uh, let me zoom out just a little bit. You can see I have the two legs right here that I just pulled up. See those? And we're just going to bring those back here and tie these off with the twisty tie. Just like this. The next step, you need to get your drill out with the 3 16 drill bit. And you're probably going to need a punch. And something to knock on that punch. <laughs> So now we want to go ahead and remove these two rivet-like pins. And these are holding the, the trigger group way back here. You can see the triggers right there. So what you want to do is just get rid of this head, this head right here. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this. And I'm going to tip this so you can get a good view. And you want to hold this nice and straight in line with, you know, sort of 90 degrees off the face of the receiver here, so you go dice it straight. And let me check my camera view, that looks good. And I'm going to go nice and slow. Just watching and checking as I go. These holes are not going to be reused. They're not going to be reused, so, you know, even if you were to drill them out, which this bit will not do, um, it's not going to prevent the gun from operating. Let's see where we are. We're getting close. You can feel when you're, when you're getting close. Okay, <laughs> it just goes right in there. There we go. I guess you don't really need to be careful. <laughs> just go for it. Alright, so, because none of this stuff you're going to use. And actually all those pins already 
I pushed out the other side. So let's see if I could just pull them out. There we go. There's one. You're not going to need this. And you're not going to need this one either. And now you, you also have some other parts you're not going to need. I just pushed it up. We're going to go. Huh. That part just disappeared. But um, that was a yoke part. You know, you're not going to need it. And you're not going to need this old trigger. And I think there's a spring in here that you're not going to need either. There it is. So now we're going to start punching pins here. We'll go ahead and raise the safety up here. We're going to take this pin out here, this pin out here. That's going to make it so you can take the hammer out and this other part of the trigger group, which uh, some of these parts we're not going to need anymore. So you're going to go ahead and, um, again, this is the right side of the receiver, and uh, which you can tell because here's the mounting bracket for optics. So, you want to punch it from the right to left. And actually, you don't even need a hammer, I don't think. Look at that. I'm just pushing this out. Just like that. See that? And this is an access pin. And you can see there's a groove here. So this is the left side. So I'm going to keep this in my little bowl here. And we can go ahead and remove this uh, half of the <laughs> half of the trigger group. The little finger trigger thing is pushed back. You're not going to need this part either anymore. Kind of neat. And now we can go ahead and remove the hammer. So I'm going to go ahead and give a push here. And you can see here's the other access pin. They're both the same size. And then we can go ahead and remove the hammer. And there it is. And the last thing, oh, there's a couple more parts here. Go ahead and get this uh, bolt hold open plate here. You can see that, and I believe we need this. And we have a spring here that we need to keep. Get out of there. And you can see how that was in there. This actually was sort of like, well, <laughs> you'll see later. All right, and the last thing is to remove your safety. So we'll go ahead and pivot this up so it's almost straight up. And we'll go ahead and work it out that groove. You see, that's why you had to turn it up because of the shape of this hole. And there you go. You have a empty, totally empty receiver. Now we have to remove the plate that they put on the bottom of the receiver that holds the trigger guard. And you can see there's a plate here that goes from here all the way to back to here, to the back <laughs> of there. So we have three rivets that we need to remove. One here. One here. And one here. I don't know if it would be easier to go to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom instead. Since none of this is going to get reused, um, I'd rather tear apart the, the plate here and then the inside of my receiver. Trying to just get it started. Wow. This is uh, pretty tough. 
Sorry, folks. I'm going to bring you around so you can see that rivet and the, and the progress that I'm making on there. Wow. I'm sweating up a storm already. You can see that right here. Push this forward just a little bit. And I took it right out of the frame. Sorry. There we go. I'm going to see if I can actually punch this through. Just for the fun of it. Not quite yet. So I got a little bit more to go. Alright. Let's try this again. Oh, I felt it go. There's one rivet. Out. <laughs> uh, let me get my uh, needle nose pliers here. You watching? I should zoom out a little bit so you can see. There we go. So there's a uh, one rivet there. Telling you. So I got a. I think I'm gonna do the one rear, the rear here also from the bottom. I don't think anyone has ever done it from the bottom before. This, at least not on video. I'm gonna keep it zoomed out just a little bit more. <sighs> I don't think anyone has ever done it like this. And this this is where a vice would probably come in handy also, by the way. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, let me bring you in so you could see a little more detail. Where'd you go? There we go. Bring that in. You can watch what I'm doing right there. You can see. Alright. Had it going good. I shouldn't have stopped. Trying to make it so you can see. Ooh. All right. It's uh, I'd rather ruin my screws. moving at all. We're getting there. Almost there. I think if I use a regular punch, let me get a... There we go. Brute force. <laughs> so, now all we got is one more rivet to go. And that one, because it's under here, I'm going to have to go from inside the receiver. Whew, this is a workout. <laughs> so you get to see everything that goes wrong, which is good. You know? People try to make everything look easy on video. And it's not. It really isn't. Alright. Now, unfortunately, again, i got to go for this middle one right here. Let me move up here so you can see it. Me, <laughs> me, not you. Um, Got to get this one right in here. You can see I, that's the one I sort of stumbled on at the beginning. Now this thing could go up to a higher speed, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this sucker up a little bit. Oh. Ooh, and you can see the smoke coming off that thing, but uh, you can see the head just popped off on there, right there. It's very hot. I don't want it to fall on my uh, my vinyl on my desk here. So now that that head popped off, I could probably punch this out. So let's see if I can give it a punch, see if it goes anywhere. Look at that. And there is the plate. Let me uh, back up a little bit. So this was on here like this. So they can ship it in the country. They rivet it on with those three rivets. And then just get that plate off. And you can see there's no damage to the receiver. Which um, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's... Uh, no paint there. So we're going to have to paint this somehow. For the handguard, you shouldn't need a hammer. <laughs> you should only need a screwdriver. And you should only have to take out this screw here. 
how loose that was. And this screw here. And uh, there we go. And that. Then you should only have to pull this forward just a little bit. Whoops. <laughs> Things you don't want to hear your doctor say, whoops. And it's not coming off. Huh. There we go. You uh, have to pull it forward. <laughs> then you can pull it off. And you can see that um, the screw here was holding this. It goes through here. And of course this screw. So once you get it, you just pull it forward. And there's the hand guard. Oh, man. Now if you want to go ahead and uh, finish a your field strip you could always take the gas tube off. I guess uh, some people take it off in the very beginning that um, you know you could risk not damaging it by taking it off. These things are so hard to get off sometimes. Um, but we could go ahead and take it off. There we go. And uh, get it to about that position right there. You can see. And then you should be able to lift it right off. There we go. So there's your gas tube. Really not necessary to take it off, but we'll go ahead and do that. So there we are. Entire. <laughs> it, it's hard to believe this is a an AK. <laughs> Just this little thing here. So that's it. This concludes uh, the disassembly for the conversion. Uh, this concludes really part two and part three I think I'm going to make uh, the dura coating of the receiver here what I'm going to do is try to tape off everything so we're just dealing with the receiver portion and I'm going to dura coat it so thank you very much for joining me here at the gear obsession channel and you you know I basically kept it real here you can see what you potentially have to deal with real life doing this where everything doesn't go perfect so again i appreciate friends viewers and subscribers <laughs> and i hope you have a great great week or weekend bye